reaching out from beyond the grave with stories to give you the chills. The cool ghoul on 66.6 Dead Air Radio. Tonight's caller puts his best foot forward and delivers a terrible tale of ill-tempered shoes. Hey there, Groovy Ghoulies. It's your nauseous narrator, the Cool Ghoul. We have a winner. After two months of deliberation, I finally selected a lucky intern. You'll get the chance to meet them soon. I'm shivering with anticipation. Finding a good pair of shoes are so hard to come by. No. That was terrible. I'm walking that one back. Telling a bad joke can sure leave you feeling... defeated. <laughs> yeah. Alright, Caller 13. You're on the air. A pair of sneakers hung from the power line, and Edgar wished they were his. He'd been shoeless and living out of a trash can for a week now and he was due for a fresh pair. He thought they'd feel awfully good on his calloused feet. Might ease the pain of that ingrown toenail that had been bugging him too. Rock in hand, he was fixing to knock them down when they dropped to the ground on their own. Well, Christ in a cracker, he thought. About time the good Lord saw fit to bless this sinner with some luck. He put them on and went for a walk. They fit like a glove. Just about the most comfortable shoes you'd find. They would work his feet over, soft, warm, and with each step giving the best foot massage of his life. Pressing and squeezing in just the right spots. Even his toenails stopped hurting. Oh, it was feeling good. Maybe he'd swing by the dumpster out back of Lancers and show the fellas his new pumps. Might even try to score a free beer. He'd been walking for a while when he noticed that the shoes felt tighter. He was sure of it. Hot, too. He thought they might just need to be broken in. But the shoes grew even tighter, and the massage turned rough, squishing and squeezing his toes until it became downright painful, each step worse than the last. Edgar tried to untie the shoes but couldn't undo the laces. He tugged the shoestrings and the strings tugged back. He tried again but the shoelaces slapped his hand away. So he boxed the toe of the shoe, and they growled. The collars pulled back, and a pair of long, hollow fangs flicked forward. Edward screamed, and the shoes struck penny barbs dug into his skin, opening his Achilles tendons, and they drank, sucking the blood from his veins. He pulled on the shoes and kicked in the air, but they held on. He didn't know what to do, so he ran, and the blood pumped. The sneaks kept slurping and sucking until he fell into the ground, dead. They pulled themselves off his feet, smacked their lips, and burped. They yawned, stretched their laces, and crawled up to the closest telephone pole and out onto the wire to hang for a nap. Late that night, just around dinner time, Billy Lee came wobbling along, his belly full of beer, his skull full of stupid that comes from being drunk. He almost stumbled over Edgar's body. The hell are you doing laying on the road, Edgar? Edgar didn't respond. He was still dead. He lived three tents down from Edgar, figuring it was the neighborly thing to do. 
dragged him on the sidewalk and then shook his head and clicked his tongue. Learn to handle your liquor, Ed. Satisfied, he moseyed on, enjoying his drunk, when a pair of sneakers landed in front of him. <laughs> they looked new. Well, this must be his lucky day. He slid on the shoes and two-stepped down the street. Strangest thing, they felt tighter than a minute ago. <laughs> <sighs> Congratulations, caller. You truly laced that story with terror. And that is a feat few can match. I'd hate to walk a mile in those shoes. I hope you enjoyed the show. And if you did, give me a like and subscribe for more monthly spooky content. And click that little bell icon so you know when the next show is out. As always, I'll be waiting right here for the next 13th caller.